As you guys know, here on the channel, I'm all about making your life easier. Because see, for me, when I was first getting into this hobby, one of the main things that I struggled with, and even now, sometimes something that still is kind of a bit of a hang up for me, is trying to figure out how to dive into a new fragrance line when you have all of these flankers. We are basically living in the world of flankers right now. It's gotten to the point where a lot of niche brands who are shying away from it for years are starting to bring out flankers and release them pretty often. So flankers, they're not going anywhere. If anything, it's gaining popularity. Some brands are worse than others, and I've talked about this before in my other videos similar to this. Essentially, this is going to be a fragrance buying guide where I take a look at a fragrance line which usually has a lot of flankers, and I'm talking at least three or more. You know, really three isn't even that much, but I have done it for three. I think the blue to Chanel's, you know, I did a video on that, but a lot of these are going to have more than three. I take a look at the line and I break them all down, try to make it digestible for you. And that way it can help you guide your purchase if you're interested. These videos always seem to do really well. I think it really does help out a lot of people. And that's what I'm all about, you know, especially if you are a bit newer to the hobby and you want to dive into a fragrance line. Maybe you've heard someone talk a lot about this fragrance or this fragrance and you take a look and there's just a ton of other flankers. It can be hard to truly decide where you want to start, but today I'm going to make that easier for you. I'm going to break down the entire Spice Bomb line and try to help you make a decision on which one you want to purchase. Now Spice Bomb fragrances usually are going to be on the higher end in terms of pricing. You can get these on discounters and I would recommend that you do buy these at discounters to save yourself some money. They will all be linked down below so you can grab them at a nice discount. Don't pay retail for these if you don't have to. Might as well save yourself some money. Grab them from somewhere like FragranceNet or FragranceX. Those are the main two discounters that I shop at and you'll be able to save yourself a good amount of money. So without further ado, let's go ahead and crack right into this one. We have five Spice Bomb fragrances that we need to break down today. Let's go. So I guess it makes sense to start right here with the Eau de Toilette. And this fragrance did really, really well. This is a bestseller, it's very popular. Women love this one, men love this one. A lot of that is due to the marketing. I mean, you have a grenade shaped bottle with some nice details to it. So really, I mean, marketing, it gets a 10 out of 10. Great, great fragrance bottle. And the fragrance itself also is a really good scent. And this one has actually been so popular, it's kind of gotten the label as the ex-boyfriend fragrance, which I always think is pretty funny. So this one has main notes of cinnamon, tobacco, pink pepper, and leather. There's some saffron in here as well. And there's a few other spicy notes as well. So very clearly, this is going to be a warm and spicy fragrance. The cinnamon aids to that. There's a pink pepper in here, which aids to that. There's this nice, warm, masculine, sexy tobacco note accompanying that with a little bit of leather. So it's got a fantastic note breakdown and it's a great wintertime fragrance. Um, this is something that works really well in winter, works really well in fall, and works great in early spring as well. I've always been a huge fan of the original Spice Bomb. Even to this day, when we have all these flankers to choose from, I still like this one a lot. And it's one that I do wear. Now, this one does have a little bit of, you know, a playful, youthful, uh, kind of fun type of smell to it. You know, it kind of smells like a player, you know, like a guy who's going to a lot of college parties and, you know, doing that sort of thing. If he was to wear a fragrance, Spice Bomb is one of the ones that I would think of. It just kind of has that thing going on. Um, it works great. It's a great compliment getter, especially for younger women, because this one does have that playful, spicy, kind of edgy sexiness to it. It's just a fragrance that works really well. That's why it's been so popular. Performance is really good. This is a newer bottle. It's a 150 mil bottle size and it performs great on my skin. People talk about reformulation, but it's still, even the new version here, does fantastic. Longevity on my skin, about nine plus hours. I mean, this stuff sticks around. Projection is very strong as well. You don't need that many sprays to really announce yourself. And if you go with too many sprays, you'll end up filling the room, which maybe that's something you want and that's cool. So just be aware that you can fill up a room with this fragrance. It is strong, it is no joke, and that is a plus for a lot of you guys out there. If you don't want as much performance, just dial back the sprays. But really, performance on my skin, even a newer bottle, is still fantastic. Up next, we're gonna talk about Spice Bomb Extreme. Spice Bomb Extreme, it's awesome. I'm not gonna get into it too much. At the end, I'll tell you which one's my favorite. I'm just gonna try to break them all down, but you know, as you can see how I'm talking about this one, I'm sure you know where this is going. The notes on this one, we have vanilla, tobacco, and black pepper really is just the main notes. There's a couple more. There's caraway and there's lavender, uh, but really the three that I just mentioned are the most prominent. The addition of vanilla 
is what makes this a stunner. This is a gorgeous fragrance. It's vanilla, so it's kind of warmed up. It's a bit more smoothed out. You still do get that pepper, so you still do get that spice like you would expect. It is still a spice bomb fragrance after all, so it's got to be in there, and it is in there. You get a little bit of that spicy kick up, up in the opening but the vanilla comes through immediately to kind of warm it up, smooth it out, and of course you still get that warm, masculine, sexy tobacco note. It is just a 10 out of 10 beautiful fragrance. It's one of my favorites, not just from the line, just in general. It is really well done. The quality is so, so good. I mean, this stuff is impressive. I put it off for the longest time, and I don't know what I was thinking. Performance on my skin is also fantastic. It's a similar thing here. This one apparently has been reformulated as well. Uh, my bottle, I'm actually not too sure of the age on this one. I'm going to show you the batch code down there at the bottom. Uh, I don't know if you can read it. I'll read it. It is 62S50DR is my batch code. So if you're curious, uh, that's what it is. I think it is an, it's definitely a newer bottle because I only got this uh, like a year or two ago. Um, so, you know, whatever that tells you, that's kind of the batch it is. And on my skin, performance is fantastic. Nine, ten plus hours, same with the original in terms of longevity and also really good projection as well. Projection is dialed back a bit on this one compared to the other toilette just because it is a higher concentrated fragrance, which is fine. That's really what you would want with this scent. Uh, you don't necessarily want a room filler here with this one, in my opinion. This one could be a bit more sensual, good for an evening out and perhaps a date as well if you limit your sprays. Now, this one, I'm going to say right off the bat, if you want something that is going to be a bit more well-rounded, a bit more smooth, a bit more mature, go for this one over the Eau de Toilette. Um, that's really the easiest way to put it, and I'll just say that here up front. More mature, kind of grown up, a guy in his 30s who has his life figured out is Spice Bomb Extreme. Spice Bomb Eau de Toilette is a guy in his early 20s. He's hitting all those college parties. He's having fun. He's partying. That's the Eau de Toilette. That's really the easiest way for me to separate the two in the least amount of words possible. Up next, we're going to be talking about Spice Bomb Eau Fresh. Now, this one, unfortunately, is discontinued, so, you know, you can't really just go pick this one up at discounters. I do believe it is sold out everywhere. I am still going to include this one just to make it a complete video. If, by chance, you happen to see a bottle pop up, you can pick it up, you know, based off of what I tell you in this video or whatever. I just, if I have it, I want to include it. Um, there are going to be some of these videos that I do with other fragrances where I may not have them all. And that's just kind of unfortunate. I've looked around and stuff like that. It would be hard to find these discontinued fragrances once they're gone. But if I do have them, I want to throw them in just to make it a complete video. Notes on this one, we have pink pepper, grapefruit, tobacco, sea salt, elemi is a few of the main notes. There are a few more as well. Uh, so what you find interesting here is there's a couple new ones. You get the sea salt. That's different. Nothing that you get in the other spice bombs. Uh, the elemi gives it a bit of a kind of resinous pine type of smell, like a woodiness about it, uh, which is very fitting for the scent. The grapefruit up top, nice little fresh blast. Still a bit of a light, fresh tobacco in here. It still does retain some of that original Spice Bomb DNA. Really the easiest way to put this one is it's the Spice Bomb Eau de Toilette DNA, just a bit more fresh and light, a bit more wearable, and really, really good for the springtime. Summertime might be a bit too warm for this one, depending on where you live and depending on what you're comfortable with. Fall, it would work okay, but by the time you get into fall, I would start reaching for Spice Bomb, just the original. You know, once you get into that cooler weather, I'm going for the sweeter stuff. But I think for springtime, this is a banger. This is a, a really, really good fragrance. It's a shame they discontinued it. I understand why it wasn't selling. I get it. Uh, but really, for you know, a fragrance enthusiast, someone who's really into this, uh, this one would be very desirable. Performance is good on my skin as well. Usually about seven, eight hours on average in terms of longevity. Projection is on the softer side. So now we're going to be getting into the night visions. This is night vision. Vision Eau de Toilette. So this one really caught a lot of people by surprise, myself included. Notes on this one, we have tonka bean, apple, orange, cardamom, just a few of the main ones. There's a lot more. And I'll tell you right here, Night Vision Eau de Toilette and the Parfum, which we'll talk about next, are a com complete cluster mess um, with the note breakdown. It's kind of weird, kind of confusing, especially the Parfum, which we'll kind of get to a little bit here next. Uh, note breakdowns are kind of weird. Really, the easiest way to put this one is it has that bubblegummy fragrance vibe. It goes in that direction. Think Paco Rabanne Invictus. Think Azaro Wanted. Um, all of those types of things. This is kind of where this one fits into. 
Now, I'm not saying this is a clone of Invictus or a clone of Wanted, but it does share a lot of similarities with those, being that it is youthful, bubblegummy, it's got that playful type of thing going on. Not really anything that you'd want to necessarily wear to the office if you are someone who does hold a nice job. You would want something that's going to be more office appropriate, something that's going to be a bit more masculine, a bit more refined. I'm just thinking something like a Tom Ford Gray Vetiver or something for like an office job like that. You get into something like this, in my opinion, and of course you can wear what you want, where you want, but I would say this is going to be a bit too playful, just a bit too kind of sweet and youthful. You know, for someone like that with a job like that, you know, you really don't want to do that. But if you're a younger guy going to school, you're uh, working, you know, at a restaurant part time, go at a grocery store, whatever, you could wear this fragrance. It's going to work great. You're a young guy. You can pull it off. That's really the crowd this one's going to be aimed for. Performance on my skin is pretty solid, about seven, eight hours or so longevity, which is pretty good, especially for an eau de toilette projection. It does pop off the skin pretty well. Last up, we're going to talk about Night Vision Eau de Parfum. This one has apple, nutty notes, cardamom, nutmeg, and benzoin. Um, there's like pistachio as well, but it's kind of redundant to say nutty notes and then pistachio. So interesting here. And that's just a few of the notes. There's many more. That's why this one especially is just a complete cluster of a mess for the note breakdown. It's really kind of a strange note breakdown. And I think it doesn't really quite represent the fragrance like I would want it to. But really, same thing here. It has that bubblegummy thing going on. Now, what you'll find interesting is this one gets compared to Azara Wanted by night. So the warmer, sweeter Azara Wanted, which still maintains some bubblegumminess, just has a bit more of a warm spiciness going on. It gets compared to that one. And smelling it on paper, off the opening, I get the comparison. I really do. Sometimes you have to be careful with these Fragrantica comparisons. Things can get upvoted for really no reason, you know. It just kind of can be misleading, disingenuous sometimes. But yeah, it does have an Azara Wanted type of thing going on up top. It still does have that Invictus C bubblegummy type of thing going on, but with a bit more of a nuttiness to it, which is weird, but that is what it is. Also gets compared a little bit to uh, One Million Lucky, which has a similar thing going on, and I get that comparison a little bit. You know, because you do get a very strong, fruity, sweet presence from the apple and all those things, kind of like in Lucky. But then you also get this kind of nuttiness, this warmer undertone. So, yeah, I do get the comparison there. Uh, you know, I would say out of the night visions, this is going to be my favorite. Performance on my skin is great as well. Better than the Eau de Toilette longevity. You're getting up into that eight, nine hour plus mark again. Projection is also a little bit stronger on my skin than the Eau de Toilette, which is kind of interesting, but it does seem to work well and radiate off my skin a bit more than the EDT. Overall, I would say this one is a major improvement over the EDT. I'm not the biggest fan of these night vision flankers. This is where I'll go ahead and start to wrap it up here. Out of the two night visions, this is going to be my favorite. The Eau de Toilette, I would personally say to skip. And really, if you're being honest, I would almost say if you have bubblegummy fragrances already and or you don't like them, you don't need these night visions. That's just my opinion. If you are into that DNA, that's awesome. And it's a great DNA to be into. It's very wearable. It's great mass appealing. If you were going to choose one, I would go with the Eau de Parfum. So the night visions aside, because they really are separate, I wanted to include them all in the video just to make it a full video, but the night visions really are completely separate from the other Spice Bomb fragrances. And if I didn't make that clear, yes, Night Visions smell nothing like the original Spice Bombs. On the original Spice Bomb side, which one is my favorite? I'm sure you guys got the memo, and if you're a fan of the channel, you know this already. It's going to be the Extreme. The Extreme is my favorite by far. Following that really is probably just the original, and then following that is, of course, the Fresh. Uh, the Fresh, again, discontinued, so it's really hard to recommend that one, and it, really it's hard for me to truly get into it and love it because I'll always have in the back of my head like, yo, if I burn through this Spice Bomb Fresh, I'm done. You know, really, I mean, unless I go pay several hundred dollars on eBay or something crazy like that, you're not going to get it again. Typically, my discontinued fragrances like that, they just do more often than not, they just kind of sit there. I will wear them every now and then, but not very much. So for me, on the Spice Bomb side, the extreme 100% the way to go, especially if you want something a bit more warm and mature. And the Eau de Toilette, in my opinion, still holds up as a great fragrance for you younger guys out there who are into partying and just being fun and just being a young guy. And I mean, that's really what it does best. So guys, that's gonna do it for me. That was my breakdown on the Spice Bomb Flankers. 
Hopefully you guys like this video. Hopefully it helps some of you out, whether you're new to the channel, whether you've been around. Um, these videos really do seem to give you guys some good guidance, so hopefully that works for you. I'm gonna be doing more videos like this. I have multiple of them planned, but let me know down below uh, what other lines I should cover. You know, any fragrance line you could think of that has multiple flankers, let me know and I will do that. Thanks so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.